What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Adventures in Rice where we look at ways that you can live better for less. And today we're going to be turning this steaming pile of shit in the corner of my kitchen into a nice looking breakfast bar. At least that's the plan. So, let's go! As you saw in the intro, this corner of my kitchen is an absolute mess. It's full of bags, boxes, clothes, hoovers. Everything is just thrown into the corner there. So what I want to do is freshen it up, give it a new lease of life and turn it into a nice breakfast area. Now first thing I've done is taken a photo of the area, which I can then put into Photoshop and then play around with some ideas, some colours, um, some accessories, things like that to see what I like and what I think will look good in that area. Okay, so now that we've got a rough idea of what it is that I want to do, we're going to have to start tracking down all of the parts. I decided to go for the dark grey that you saw in the picture, so I've picked up this pot of pure grey matte paint from Wilco's. It's two and a half litres and about ten pounds, which will be more than enough to do the two walls. I'm going to do the far wall there and the inner wall just to match. Now the reason I went for the matte paint rather than silk or satin is that we don't want to get any glared spots from the lights above or from the light coming in from the, the window there. You can see in the background, currently that's a matte paint, so there's no big glary uh, reflections of the lights in there at all. Now of course the other thing we're gonna need is a breakfast bar to put in there. Now you can pick up worktops from B&Q. These are usually around about 70 to 80 pounds and upwards for the laminate ones. The trouble is that they only come in three meter lengths, so depending on how big you want your breakfast bar, once you start cutting that down, you're wasting money and materials of course. Um, because we're broke, we have to do a thing on the cheap, so I actually had a look on Facebook and you do find that a lot of people who have recently renovated their kitchens will sell the offcuts cheaper on Facebook or on eBay places like that. The one that you're going to see later on I actually picked up on Facebook for free. It is a little bit bigger than I need and certainly deeper because the, the window, if you can see there, is, um, is kind of in the way. So I'm going to have to cut that down quite a bit. I've managed to borrow a circular saw off my dad, so hopefully all things going well. We'll be able to cut through that without uh, chipping it and tearing it up. Now the only other thing we're going to do first is obviously clear out that corner. The tumble dryer there is an older one, so that's going to be going. I've got a new one underneath the kitchen units um, just here now, so that's going to free up a lot more space. And I'm going to clear out all the bags, the boxes, the hoover, all the crap that's in there and get that all cleared out and then we'll be able to start painting. So let's crack on. Okay guys, as you can probably hear, it's a lot echoier now, more echoey, echoier. I've cleared out the, uh, the corner there, got rid of the tumble dryer, given it a wipe down and a quick hoover, so now all we've got to do is paint. You will notice I won't put down any sheets, that's simply because I can't be bothered, and this is uh, emulsion water based, so if I get it on the floor, I can just wipe it straight off, it cleans up really, really easy. I'm not going to mask and tape the edges either, because I've got pretty good with the paintbrush now. So um, I'll crack on, get the painting done. Hopefully it's not going to come out too dark. It, uh, it did look like it's been quite dark, but we'll, we'll put it in and see what happens. Okay guys, so I've done the first coat of paint, as you can see. Um, people are probably going to shred me for my painting technique, but I absolutely love these paint pads. They go on really thin, so they dry really quick, so you can get a good two or three coats done in a few hours. Really, really easy to use as well, and get great coverage. You just have to do it a few times, that's all. So um, we'll let that dry a little bit more, and then we'll bang on with the second coat. Right guys, so I've done all the painting now, I'm going to leave that to dry overnight, it's got a bit later on in the day than I was hoping, so we'll call it a day for now, come back tomorrow, um, touch up any little bits that need touching up in the daylight, and then we'll start putting in the breakfast by itself. So, see you tomorrow. So it's now day two of the build, the paint job. The paint's come out pretty well, as you can see. Um, really nice smooth job, which is why I like using those paint pads 
few little touch-ups to do in the corners, but you know, that's easy enough with a small paintbrush. The plan for today is to get the support system in place for the worktop, and that's gonna consist of three buttons, one across the back and then one up each side, and then the worktop's gonna rest on that and that's gonna support it then. Before I do put the worktop in, I'm probably gonna to attempt to do the chalk artwork on the wall, just so there's nothing in the way and it's a little bit easier to get to. Once that's done, uh, we can cut down the worktop, fit it to size, slot it in, and that pretty much should be it done then. So uh, let's crack on. I've now cut the wood to size. So we've got this, uh, this pine strip wood, came from B&Q. It's 25 millimeters thick and 48, I think it is, uh, millimeters wide. Got the two end struts, gonna go down, obviously, the, the far left and right. And then the long piece to go across the back. And then the worktop's just gonna sit on top of those and we're going to secure that then with some brackets underneath as well just to make sure it doesn't move. To get these on we need to find the struts uh, in, or the studs inside the wall. So somewhere in that wall there'll be big chunks of wood that are just coming down to support the wall. We're going to find those and then we can fix these straight into that. That's going to give us a much more stable platform. Once we come to put these on we're going to use a spirit level obviously to make sure that the worktop is completely straight, the breakfast bar is nice and level across the top. The longer the spirit level, the better it's gonna be and more accurate it's gonna be. If you don't have one of these, you can get an app from the Apple Store or Google Play Store to uh, run on your phone. Same principle applies, you just stick it on and then level up the bubble in between the two lines. Because your phone's a lot shorter, it's not gonna be as accurate, but if you've got nothing else, it'll definitely do. So to find the studs in the wall, what we're gonna do is just gonna tap across until we hear the difference um, in the sound from the tapping. You can get stud finders, obviously that's another expense, but if you do have somebody close by who has one, obviously you can borrow theirs. Same again with the electrical cable. You can get detectors if somebody's got one of those or you're a bit unsure, it's always worth investing in one of those. So in the UK, the distance between the studs is usually 400 to 600 mil, so they should be spaced out about that. So. We'll give it a go and see what we can find. Okay, so we can see there that the stud is 600 mil in from the outside, the inside of the wall. It's worth bearing in mind that there's often studs going horizontally as well, so you do want to tap around just to make sure you're not going into one of those instead. Now we've located the studs, we just need to uh, place the markers, use the spirit level, and then get the button stuck to the wall. I've decided I'm gonna go for about 41 inches from the floor, just so the worktop's still usable from a standing position. It's not gonna match the kitchen units around the kitchen, which are currently 36, but it's over in the corner and a different end of the uh, kitchen, so it's not really gonna make much of a difference. So one thing that you want to be really, really careful of whenever you're working with a wall that has a switch or a socket on is that you never want to drill, cut, nail or hammer into any of the 90 degrees off the, the socket or the switch. So that's straight up, straight down, straight left or straight right. And the reason for this is pretty obvious that the electrical cables going to the plug are going to be running in one of those directions. Depending if you're upstairs or downstairs can make a difference, but it's always best just to avoid those four directions. Uh, so the last thing you want is to drill straight into an electrical cable and you can blow the, um, the fuse box or electrocute yourself. Okay. <clears throat> right, now I've drilled a couple of pilot holes in the wood here. Um, don't worry if you haven't got a drill or you can't borrow one, it's not the end of the world, it just means it's going to be a bit harder and you have to do it by hand. Um, and then put this up against the wall, made sure it was level again, poked a nail through the hole here so I can mark on the wall where we want the, 
screws to go into, so it's all going to be lined out when we screw this to the wall in a, mi in a minute. It's always worth checking what's behind the wall as well. Um, I did actually drill through my bedroom wall once and then straight out into the bathroom mirror. So before I go any further, I just wanted to go over a couple of extra things. I've been using these plastic plasterboard wall dowels. Um, essentially, you get them in different colours, different sizes, some yellow ones, some brown ones. Um, and essentially what they do is you drill a hole into the wall, you push these in and then the screw will go inside the dowel and then as it goes in it's going to expand that and give you a much tighter, more secure connection. Um, when you put the, the buttons or whatever it is you're putting up on the wall. There are different ones you can get. Obviously, like I said, different colours, different, uh, different sizes. You can get metal ones for concrete walls. I like these. These are called toggle, uh, toggle dowels, I think. And essentially, you drill the hole in the wall. It's quite a big hole for these ones. You push those together. That goes into the wall. And then as you screw this, so if you imagine your wall's here, behind the wall that's going to open up and sort of bracket itself onto the plasterboard. So these are really good for putting things up when you haven't got anything, no studs, no, no uh, brick or anything behind the plasterboard. These are really, really good. This wall here, there is nothing, no studs behind there. So I'm going to put three connections in there and I've only got one of these left. So I'm going to put that on the end where any weight would end up being. Um, so hopefully that's going to give us a much tighter connection. The other thing to mention is pro tip. When you're buying screws, or pretty much any small things, the dowels, the screws, nails, anything like that, if you go to uh, Screwfix, um, obviously not sponsored by Screwfix, but if you go to Screwfix, they sell them with all that, without all the fancy packaging. So this is a packet of, these are the screws I'm using. These are four by 65 millimeters. So we need the long ones to get through the wood, through the plasterboard and into the studs. So 65 mil, um, multi-purpose screws. This is a pack of 100. I'd have to double check, but it probably cost me about a quid, um, maybe a quid fifty. If you buy the same thing in B&Q, you're probably looking at five to seven pounds. Um, and the worst thing is, it's the same company. They're both owned by the same sort of uh, parent company. So yeah, anytime you want to get anything from B&Q, see if it's on Screwfix first, because you're going to get it a lot cheaper. So we'll crack on and uh, try and get the rest of these beams up. Beams, woods, studs, struts, whatever you want to call them. As you can see, the buttons are all in place now. I've checked my spirit level to make sure they're all leveled off and they are absolutely perfect. So that's all ready to put the worktop on when we come to that. Before we put that on, so I've got better access to the wall, I'm gonna start doing the chalk uh, artwork up on the wall there. I've gone for the concept one from the, uh, the rough design I did in Photoshop. So I might outline it in pencil first just to get a rough idea. And so if anything does go wrong, it shouldn't be too difficult to fix. So uh, we'll see how that goes now. The battery died halfway through the artwork, so you didn't even get to see the cool colouring in part. But hopefully I'll get some pickup shots I can throw in there anyway. It came out pretty well, not quite as good as I was hoping, but um, it's not bad overall, so I'm pretty happy with the results. All we have to do now is measure the worktop, cut that to size, and then slot that into the buttons that we fixed in place before. And then we're going to secure that down with some brackets. I've already measured the distance between the two walls, so it's going to be 171 centimetres and 6 millimetres which is a pretty accurate cut, and this is going to be my first time using a circular saw. So, fingers crossed.
this is the worktop. It is now being cut to size. It is 171 centimeters and six millimeters long. So it's gonna be a pretty snug fit. I'm expecting it to chip the paint and scrape the walls a bit just as we put it in, but I'd rather have a nice tight fit than one that's gonna have a gap all around the edge. And obviously we can just paint over any little marks that we're gonna leave anyway. Um, it came out pretty well. Like I said, first time using a circular saw. Uh, lots of measuring and double measuring and then measuring again. Uh, you can never measure enough. The edgings come out really nice, really clean edges, so that's uh, really important because then we're going to save money by not having to buy beading or edging to cover any chips around the edge. So we'll stick that onto the battens now. Like I say, this should fit. I'm expecting it to scrape the walls, that's going to be fine. And then once it's on, we're going to use some small brackets underneath just to fix this to the, the uh, battens themselves, just to stop it moving around. So, let's go. We got it in and it fits. Um, it was a little bit tight, as you probably saw in the video there. Um, needed a bit of pushing and forcing in. So it has scraped the paint a little bit on the one side, but obviously that's not a problem. We can easily paint over that. But overall, I'd, like I said, I'd rather it be a tight fit than have too much room and, uh, and leave gaps all around the edge. So really tight fit, pretty snug. Probably doesn't need the brackets, but we'll put them in there anyway, just for some extra support. The only thing I don't like at the moment is underneath here, you can see one of the, um, the battens on the wall. So what I'll probably do is just paint that white just to help it blend into the wall and look a bit nicer. But overall, great job. Okay guys, so we've finally done it. We've got the walls painted. We've got the chalk up on the wall and the worktop in. A nice tight fit. That's what she said. <laughs> so really happy with that. All we have to do now is add in my fake plastic cheese plant. For an added touch. And of course I will be on the hunt on Facebook and eBay for some cheap bar stools that are gonna match the work surface there. Uh, that way we can sit at the bar instead of standing. Total project cost was about £22.45. The most expensive things, of course, being the paint, which was a, uh, £10 for a two litre tin. We still have half of that left. The wooden beams that we fixed to the walls, that was 2.4 metres from B&Q, and that came in at just under £10. Uh, obviously cut that down to size. The only other things we paid for then were the uh, brackets to fix the worktop to the buttons. We had four of those at 50p each, and the packet of chalk, which was 50p from an arts and crafts store. So total cost about £22.45. Of course, if you did like this video or you have any suggestions, comments or questions, leave them down below in the comments. And if you want to tell me I used the wrong screws, the wrong wood, the wrong tape measure and I paint the wrong way, be sure to leave that down in the comments as well. Thank you so much again for taking the time to watch the video and until next time, live better.